with the blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need thy mercy. The fourth glorious mystery is the Assumption of Mary. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need in thy mercy. The fifth glorious mystery is the crowning of Mary, Queen of Heaven and Earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bless this day our daily bread, and bring us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with 
Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, it was now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, shown unto us the blessed fruit to thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant we beseech thee that by meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. A warm welcome, I feel. Well, today um, we celebrate confirmation, and we're um, very, very pleased to see you all here today. And I see you're keeping social distance 
No. Just kidding. You're all family. So, we're glad you're here and, um, and welcome our bishop who is with us today. The um, times we're living in have, have presented us with many things and um, one is, uh, is this space issue we've been dealing with, with the virus. And the second is that um, we've had our eyes open to uh, some horrible things that have happened by people who should know better and discipline to do so. And the, the racism that uh, our nation, and you and I, we have our prejudices, the nature of a president, we don't really know we have it. And so these uh, many um, demonstrations have done good things to open our eyes, but then they've been taken advantage of by people who've done violent things, and that is destruction. So our bishop has written a letter, and I would like to read that. The events of recent days have been shocking and unsettling. The death of George Floyd uh, was brutal and unnecessary. It arouses within us a sense of injustice and outrage, as does the sin of racism, which looms over us again. But the violence that followed this tragic death is also sinful. Innocent people were harmed and more lives were lost. Pope Francis expressed well the dilemma and the challenge we face, and I quote, we cannot tolerate or turn to a blind eye to racism and exclusion in any form, and yet claim to defend the sacredness of every human life. At the same time, we have to recognize that the violence of recent nights is self-destructive and self-defeating. Nothing is gained by violence and so much is lost." Unquote. Let us pray for those who have been victims of racism and violence, and let us recommit ourselves to the fostering of peace and the dignity of every human person in our troubled nation. May God's grace cast out hatred and bring healing and reconciliation. Yours sincerely, Most Reverend John T. Solfolda. He also recommended a novena, ten to five days, ten, nine days of prayer, every day saying it's the same prayer. We made copies of it and we have it at, uh, on the tables as you leave today and hope you'll take that with you. It would be a great thing for you to do as a family. Find a time once a day to pray this prayer on this feast of the Most Holy Trinity that we can find ways to be united as our God is. So let us stand and welcome our bishop. Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, 
Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred history. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, the Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord.
Our psalm response is glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop Fulda, the parish community of St. John's wishes to present you these children who have been prepared and are now ready to celebrate the sacraments of confirmation and first Eucharist. It is my privilege to present them to you at this time. Timothy Michael Douglas, Trevin Andrew Kelgard, Haley Francis Hoffman, Connor Paul Ireland, Ryland Nicholas Schroeder, Schrader, Schroeder, well, both of them. Jack Thomas, and Bar Jack Thomas Barton, Adley Elizabeth Mauck, Nathaniel Altoff, Gavin Sebastian Hoffert, London Therese Hoffert. Thank you, Father. I'm very glad to be with all of you today and to celebrate this great event with these young people. I'm going to have the, the kids sit down for a few minutes, okay? Very good. Well, one of the most unfortunate things about this whole pandemic experience that we had is that we had to cancel so many of our confirmation celebrations, which I, I was very disappointed about. But I am so happy that uh, Father invited me to come and to be with all of you today. He said that he got to do some of the students and I get to do the rest of them. And I said, well, I'm sure I got to do the really good ones. So that's, that's what I'm counting on. 
It's a joy to be here, and I congratulate these young ladies and gentlemen on this great day in their spiritual lives. I know that, you know, all the classes and, and preparation were kind of disrupted over the last couple of months, but nonetheless, I, I'm very proud of you for persevering and hanging in there and continuing to get ready for this great event. I know you've been praying and studying, and I'm very proud of you. I also certainly congratulate your parents and your family members because, you know, especially now with uh, the, the quarantines that we've had to experience, you've taken on an even more important role in preparing your own children, your sons and daughters for this great moment. So thank you for that and uh, keep up the good work with them. I know that the challenges aren't over, but God provides. He's with us through all of this. And I know that out of love for your, your own sons and daughters, you'll continue to share this gift of faith with them, especially in these challenging times. So thank you for that and keep up the good work. I certainly uh, congratulate our, our teachers, our catechists, because you've done so much as well to prepare these, these young people for this great moment. I know you give a lot of your time and love and share the gifts that you've been given and uh, we're all grateful, certainly your, your pastor is, uh, your, the families and parents of these children are grateful to you, and, and I am too, as your bishop, so thank you for all that you've done. I want to also acknowledge the sponsors for the great role that you're taking today in uh, joining these young people as they make their confirmation and their first communion. Obviously, you mean a lot to these kids. They've chosen you to stand with them. That says something about your role in their lives. But this is more than just an honor. There's a responsibility that comes with it as well. To pray for the one you're standing with, to set a good example for them, to show them by your own life how to live the faith, and also to encourage them along the way. Your sponsoring doesn't end today, but it continues. So, sponsors, I am grateful to you for your willingness to take on this very important role on this important day in the spiritual lives of these kids. So, blessings on you all. Well, I want to talk now to the young people, and usually, of course, I would be down there with you and, and uh, walking around a little bit, but Father tells me that for the live streaming and recording, it's better if I stand up here. So I'm just going to ask a few questions, and uh, when you have the answer, don't hesitate to, to raise your hand and take your mask off and tell me the answer so I can hear you, okay? Because as you see, I don't have a mask on either. They say that um, bishops bishops are, are, are not giving off the, the, pan or the virus as much as everybody else. I'm, I'm making that up, of course, but, but we'll, we'll all try to be safe. Uh, and do it this way. Well, as I said, this is a great day for all of you. I wonder, and I'm talking to the, the uh, young people now, I wonder if, if you've ever had like a, a guest, a special visitor come and visit your house, maybe your best friend or uh, one of your grandparents. Have you ever had a visitor, a special visitor come to visit your house? How many of you have? Can you raise your hands? Okay, just about everyone. I see that. Great. What are the things we do when we have a visitor come to see us? When you have your best friend or your, your grandma or grandpa come to the door, what do you do? What are some of the things you ordinarily would do? Can you tell me? You play with them, sure. You, have, you, you enjoy their company, don't you? What else do you do? What else do you do when, when they knock at the door? Can you tell me? Wayne back there. Let's say it again. Take your mask down a little bit. One more time. You welcome them, of course. Very, very good. You'd open the door, wouldn't you? You'd say, welcome, come on in. Come in, I'm glad you're here. Would you look out the door and then slam the door on them? Surely not, of course not. We want them to feel welcome. You know, one of the parishes where I asked that question, how do you prepare for your visitors to come? One of the kids even said, clean my room. I thought, wow, that's good. That's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. So we do all those things. We welcome them. We spend time with them. We talk with them. We play with them. Maybe we clean our rooms. We maybe have a nice meal for them. 
Well, today, my friends, today you're receiving a visit from the most important visitors you could possibly imagine. God is coming to visit you. God the Holy Spirit, God the Son, the Father. God the Father is sending His Son and His Spirit to be with you, to be with you, to visit you, and to remain with you all your lives, all your lives. This isn't just a, a once-off and done kind of a visit, but this is a visit that is meant to endure throughout your lives. And we welcome them into our lives, don't we? We welcome God the Holy Spirit. We welcome God the Son into our hearts, into our souls, into our very lives, because we want to be with them and they want to be with us. And the way they're coming to visit us today is through the sacraments. Through the sacraments, God comes to us to abide with us, to spend time with us, to share his life with us. And that's what's going to happen in Confirmation and First Holy Eucharist. But that's what always happens through the sacraments. God comes to us and shares his life with us. I wonder, can you tell me how many sacraments there are? How many sacraments are there? Yes, this young man in the second row. Yeah. There are seven sacraments. That's correct. Very good. And what's the very first sacrament that we always receive? Yes, sir, right there. Baptism. Right. Remember what happens in baptism? Father takes the water and he pours it over us. He says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The three persons of the Blessed Trinity that we celebrate today on this Trinity Sunday. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And through baptism, he pours his grace into our lives, into our souls. He shares his own life with us. We're washed, all of our sins are washed away and we become his adopted sons and daughters. So baptism is how it all starts. And every sacrament follows upon those, or upon baptism. So what are the other sacraments that we have? Way in the back, yes. Eucharist, that's one of the sacraments we're gonna to celebrate today. Correct, all right, so we have baptism and Eucharist. What's another one? What's another one? Way in the back, yes ma'am, yes. Say it again. Reconciliation. Okay, I heard you. Yes. Very, very good. Reconciliation. Excellent. I think that's what you said, isn't it? Yeah, good. All right. You know, reconciliation is so important because, unfortunately, during our lifetime, we all have committed sins, haven't we? We've all committed sins, and so we need God's mercy, right? We need God's forgiveness. It's kind of like the... The young man who said that he cleans his room before his visitor comes. We have to clean our souls, don't we? We have to sweep away everything that would keep God from dwelling in our hearts. And so we come to God, we ask him for his forgiveness, right? God doesn't want us to be stuck in our sins. He wants us to be freed and to be forgiven. And so he offers us that forgiveness whenever we come to him and tell him we're sorry for our sins. And that's what reconciliation does. We come to the Lord, we confess our sinfulness, and through the words of the priest, the absolution of the priest, we are forgiven. It's beautiful. All right, very good. What's another sacrament? What's another one? Yes, right there, young man. Say it real loud. Confirmation, is that what you said? Very good. That's the other sacrament you're gonna to receive today in just a little while very shortly, so we'll talk about that. What's another sacrament? Can you tell me another one? We've done baptism, Eucharist, reconciliation, confirmation. Yes, way in back. Holy orders. Who receives holy orders? That's right, you're right, that's another sacrament. Who receives holy orders? Can you tell me? The priest, who else? I'm going to give you a hint. It's me. <laughs> the bishop and deacons, right? Exactly. Remember, Jesus chose his apostles to continue the work that he had begun. 
to shepherd his people, to teach the faith, to lead them in worship and prayer. But the apostles, they weren't going to be around forever. So they then chose others to continue the work that they had done. So they chose bishops and priests and deacons to continue that mission of Jesus in the world, the mission that he gave to his church. And so bishops, priests, and deacons continue to shepherd God's people. They continue to teach the faith, and they continue to lead the church in worship and prayer. Very, very good. All right. Let's see. Is there another sacrament that we haven't thought of yet? Uh, yeah. Marriage. Exactly. Right. The sacrament that our moms and dads exchange with each other. They join their lives together. They give their lives to one another. And God blesses that gift by joining them spiritually. And by the gift of life that they share with one another with God's blessing, then they bring forth new life as well. The life of you, their children. So marriage is a beautiful sacrament. And I think there's one more left, one more sacrament. Way in the back, yes ma'am. Anointing of the sick, correct. Very good, you know, Sometimes in our lives, we need God's strength because we suffer illness. We suffer the weakness of old age. We, we sometimes are getting ready to transition from this life into the eternal life that awaits us. And so we receive the anointing of the sick. We're anointed with the holy oil that is a sign of God's healing grace. He offers to us not only healing for our bodies, but also for our souls. He strengthens us for the journey, and he prepares us to enter into the eternal life that he's made ready for us. So anointing of the sick is another way that God comes. He visits us with his grace. He remains in our souls with his divine life, and he prepares to welcome us into eternal life. Beautiful. Good job. Very good job. Well, let's talk about those two sacraments that you're going to receive today that are a special visit, you might say, from God. Let's talk first about confirmation. Who is it that visits you, that comes to you, who is sent to you in confirmation? Do you know who is coming to you in confirmation? Yes, in the second row. The Holy Spirit, correct. God sends his Holy Spirit to us in the sacrament of confirmation. Do you remember that day that the, the Holy Spirit first came to the apostles, that Jesus first sent them, or sent the Spirit to his apostles? What do we call that day? It starts with a P. Do you remember that? It starts with a P. We celebrated it last week. Okay, it's called Pentecost. Do you remember that? Remember how on Pentecost, the apostles were all gathered in that upper room. They were all praying and they were waiting because Jesus had promised that he would send them the, the, the gift of the Father. And all of a sudden they heard the sound of a wind and they saw tongues of fire come and rest on each one of them. And the Holy Spirit came and filled their hearts with all of his grace, all of his power, the divine life of God came to them through the Holy Spirit. He visited them with all the gifts that he wanted them to receive. I wonder, do you remember those gifts of the Holy Spirit? First of all, how many gifts of the Spirit are there that he gave to the apostles? Do you remember? How many gifts of the Spirit are there? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> you want to try? I bet you know. Okay, we'll go to the guy right behind you. Yes, sir. There are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. You're right. Can you name one of them? Wisdom. Right, exactly. What's another one? Yes. Understanding. Right. Right there. Second row. Knowledge. You got it. Very good. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Yes. Way in the back. Piety, very good. What's another one? Yes, third row. Yes. 
Say it again. I, oh, fortitude. Is that what you said? Good job. You got it. All right. We're doing well. There's a couple left. Right in front. Fear the Lord. Excellent. And let's see. Way in the back. Right on the end. Counsel. Excellent. Did we get them all? I think we did, didn't we? Let's go through those. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, piety, fear of the Lord, and fortitude. Very good. Excellent. And I know that you've studied all those. I know that you've really begun to, to understand what those gifts are. The Holy Spirit gives you those gifts, just as he gave those gifts to the apostles, so that they could go out and live the faith and share the faith. He gave those, or is going to give those same gifts to you for that reason, so that you can grow strong in your faith and live it as you go out into the world, so that you can share that faith with others courageously and joyfully, so that you can endure the challenges that sometimes we face as followers of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is giving you all those very same gifts that he gave to his apostles on Pentecost. He comes to you. He visits you to share those gifts. And, you know, once he comes to you with these gifts, once he touches your soul with his grace, he wants to be with you always. It's not like he shows up for a minute and then disappears. No, he's always going to be with you through this sacrament of confirmation. So it's a very special moment that you're experiencing. It's a once-in-a-lifetime moment. You're receiving confirmation today, and it's going to be that confirmation will be with you always, that sacramental grace. So very, very good. Now, the other sacrament you're receiving today is the Holy Eucharist, right? For the very first time. Who is it that you're receiving when you receive the Holy Eucharist? Do you know? Who is it you're receiving? Yes, sir. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God. Do you remember when he first gave you or gave us the Eucharist? What was that celebration called when Jesus first gave the Holy Eucharist to his apostles? Who can tell me? Is that a hand there that you want to tell me? Do you know? No? <laughs> Were you just stretching? What was that? Say it loud. Last Supper, correct, excellent. At the Last Supper, Jesus was gathered for the Passover meal with his apostles. He took bread and he said, take this all of you and eat it, this is my body. Then he gave them the, the wine, he said, take this and drink of it, this is my blood. Now was Jesus just giving them plain old bread and wine? Of course not. He was giving them his body and blood, his own life, his own life. He knew that the very next day he was going to pour out his life for them upon the cross. But he wanted to share that gift of his life with them always. And so he gave to them and to us the sacrament of the Eucharist so that he can come to us, visit us, be with us all our lives. Remember he said, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. And through the Eucharist, which you're receiving for the very first time today, Jesus fulfills that promise. He comes to us. He shares his body and blood, soul and divinity with you and with me through the Eucharist. And he abides with us so that he can help us on our way as we prepare for the eternal life in heaven that he's prepared for us. The Eucharist feeds our souls just as food feeds our bodies. The Eucharist nourishes us. The Eucharist is Jesus. It's not just a symbol or a, a, you know, a, a nice reminder, but it is Jesus coming to us under the appearances of bread and wine. So we're so very blessed in this sacrament of Eucharist. Now let me ask you this though. This is your first Holy Communion, right? Is this going to be your last Holy Communion too? Is this going to be the last time you receive Holy Communion? Yes? No? You're shaking your head no. So you get to receive the Eucharist again. Is that what you're telling me? Is that right? 
Of course. Do you get to receive the Eucharist, what, one more time after today? No. How many more times? Five more times? Ten more times? What do you think? A lot. <laughs> That's the right answer. A lot. As often as you come to Mass, right, you can receive the Holy Eucharist. Because every time Father says those words of Jesus at the altar, this is my body, this is my blood, Jesus is offering himself to us again. He's offering this gift of his own life to us. And every time we come to celebrate the Mass, Jesus offers us this great gift of the Eucharist. And we should want to receive him as often as we can, at least every Sunday, of course, because this is the Lord's Day. But we want to be with our Lord, and he wants to be with us. Remember we talked about those special visitors that we welcome. If God is coming to knock on our door, if Jesus comes and says, I want to come and visit you, do we slam the door on him? Of course not. No. We want to welcome him into our lives. And that's why we try to receive him in the Eucharist at Mass as often as we possibly can, so that he can be with us during our journey through life. Well, very good. You've done a great job. And I'm so glad to be with you today to share these sacraments with you. But I have to ask you just a couple more things, real easy ones. Tell me once more, what's the very first sacrament that we receive? What is the very first? Yes, second row. Baptism, correct, exactly. Now, when you were baptized, did you know that you had to answer some questions and make some promises? Did you, do you remember doing that at your baptism? No? How come? Why don't you remember that? Why not? Uh, why? We'll stick with you. Why do you think you don't remember that? How old were you when you were baptized? Were you pretty little? Could you talk yet? <laughs> Being shy. Okay. I was only five days old when I was baptized. I don't know about you. I was so little, I couldn't talk. Now, my mom and dad told me that I cried a lot, but I couldn't answer those questions. So who do you think answered those questions for you when you were baptized? Who did that? Can you tell me? Your mom and dad, right, your parents and your godparents. They were already sharing the gift of faith with you, weren't they, by answering those questions. But before I can confirm you, I have to ask you those very same questions. Who's gonna answer today? Are you going to expect your moms and dads to answer for you? Or are you going to answer those questions? You are. That's right. You're going to answer those questions. Now you got, you're wearing masks over your face, so you're going to have to answer loud and strong, aren't you? Right? You don't need somebody else to speak for you today. You can do it yourself. You're growing up in your faith, right? And so when you answer those questions, we're all going to be listening. We all want to hear loud, strong, faithful answers, like you really mean it. Can you do that? Okay? All right. Those who are to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation and Holy Eucharist, please stand. On the day of Pentecost, the apostles received the Holy Spirit in fulfillment of the promise that Jesus had made to them. And now, today, bishops, as successors of those apostles, have been given the power and the authority to share the same gift of the Spirit with God's people already reborn in baptism. So as you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit today, our Lord is asking you to be his his disciples, his active members of the church, his witnesses in the world. He asks you, by the grace of his spirit, to go out into the world and live your faith as his faithful followers. And so as you prepare to receive the sacrament of confirmation, I ask you to renew the profession of faith that you made at your baptism or that your parents and godparents made for you. And so... Maybe you can take your masks off as you prepare to uh, profess your faith. Let's do that.
And so, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. And we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now I would ask everyone to please stand. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them, to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Those to be confirmed, please kneel. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from his Holy Spirit, are one. For these, his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed and who will today receive their first Eucharist, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the bishops, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for the whole world, that all people who have one Maker and Father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts, seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles, and will that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, Listen favorably to our prayer, and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now be spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord's love sacrifice to your hand, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very true. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by, the, by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with St. John the Evangelist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with yours. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Peace,